I've been working a cute thief hard this last year, but I think it's time for another bike build. And his back is turned. I guess he is due a rest. Looks like I'm on my own this week. Now I've quite enjoyed putting my bikes to the test by entering them into trials competitions, despite them not really being best suited for that. The one bike that I did build for comps worked great, but I fancy a bit of an experiment with brake setup. But first, I need to explain the strange world of trials braking preferences. Stick with me here. I usually run a rear rim brake and front disc on my comp bikes. The advantage of a rim brake is that by locking the wheel at the outermost part, you get the most precise control, because there's no movement from the pads or the spokes. Whereas locking the wheel from the centre gives some movement at the outside of the wheel, which can be off-putting. The only reason I like a front disc is for quieter braking, as rim brakes on trials bike can be very loud. On 20 inch competition bikes, it's now quite common to see the opposite brake combo used. A front rim brake has a huge advantage for a move called a hook, where you hook the front wheel over an edge with the bike vertically and spring up to the object as it reduces a lot of unwanted flex. And then a disc at the rear gives quiet braking with some modulation. There's much less spoke flex in these small wheels, so running a rear disc isn't as much of an issue. I'm glossing over a ton of other pros and cons for each brake type, but hopefully you get a bit of an idea. I fancy trying the 20 inch brake style on 26 inch, but my bike doesn't have a disc mount, so I'll have to build something new. What a shame. Because the cute thief is having a holiday, I have to find my own parts. I'm lazy, so I'm just going to use what I had within reach. Fortunately, I'm a bit of a hoarder, so shouldn't have too much issue. Now here's something quite interesting. My old Ozoni XR26 frame I had in the late 2000s. This wasn't a comp frame, but I used it as one. To try and get my bike as light as possible, I actually modified the frame substantially. This is what inspired my Drillium bike build I did a while back. Amazingly, with all these modifications and a lot of abuse from years of riding, it never broke. The only bad thing is this frame actually came with a rear disc mount, which would have been perfect, but I cut it off. Fortunately, I just so happened to have another one in good condition with no parts chopped off. Now this gives you a better idea of the effort I put in to save weight. But I'm curious, how much weight did I actually save? <laughs> Only 20 grams. To be fair, there's probably half a kilo of body filler and paint smoothing the dents. It didn't have an easy life. But anyway, that's a history lesson done. Let's make use of this other one and its disc mount. I've chosen some parts. Let's show you what I've got. Unlike Thor, I go for the head set first. These were in my old frame, so it's nice they're reliving the good times again. And speaking of good times, the headset fitting 2x2 hasn't had any action for a while and is definitely having a good time today. Lock up your headsets, it's hungry for more. Remember the fork from my Ashton build? Well, this isn't it. Well it is, but it's not. It's the same giant trials fork model, but not the one I previously had. It's seen better days, but these are strong, not too heavy, but most importantly has V-brake mounts, a rare thing on trials forks these days. I may have stolen my own stem from my comp bike. Thieving for myself, the cute thief won't let me live this one down but the length and angle was too much to resist. I've got some of this fashionable black stuff as a top cap, a lovely bit of weight saving, or it would be if I didn't use this heavy steel bolt. 
I then found a Trautic bar which is also made of the black fashionable stuff. It's not as high as a modern comp bar, but it suits the era of the frame, so should be a good match. To try and fit in with the modern world, I'm going to ditch my usual rolled back street style bar position and instead roll them forward like the cool comp kids do. I've tried this before and I found it as pleasant as standing nude in a swarm of Scottish midges. But I'll make you a deal, if they sound good, then I'll stick with them tilted for a little while at least. That settles that then. Ugh, oh, I might end up regretting this. You may have seen this front round before. It's the same actual exact one I had on my Ashton. And is a Trartec Carthy rim onto Trartec hub. Much like the fork, this does have a disc mount, which I won't be using and instead has a roughened rim surface, which I will be. By running an angle grinder over the braking surface, I create an aggressive texture, which combined with specific pads, increases brake bite, hold, and wet weather performance, at the sacrifice of modulation and quietness. Now my contact with 90% air and 10% floor will be a Jitsi reverse front tire. These are unique in the cycling world as they're probably the softest compound, lightweight, two inch tire available. And as you can see, this has had plenty of use, but I think there's still some life left in it yet. No tubeless this time though, so I'm resorting to some ancient technology. Fingers crossed this works. Oh hey, that worked a treat. Fully inflated too. But much like the rim texture, it's a little aggressive. I'm sure this fork will tame it though. And yes, the wheel is on the wrong way, but with how I'm using it, there really isn't a right or wrong way, so I did this just to freak out a few people. Moving backwards, things aren't as easy as I have to build a wheel specifically for this bike. But that gives me the chance to build something pretty pimp with this Chris King single speed hub I found in a cobweb and this light bicycle carbon 26 plus size rim I found nicely wrapped in a box from light bicycle. Being a plus sized rim, it's wider than usual at 45mm outer and 40 inner. Here I have a trial specific rear rim and the width is almost exactly the same, which means a light bicycle one would be perfect for the rear of this bike. It should also be stiffer, as trials rims are often single walled with large cutouts to save weight, which isn't as stiff as a doubled walled version like the light bicycle. Trial specific rims can often bite too, so be careful. The other advantage is I can go tubeless a lot easier too and avoid pinch punches, which are common in trials. I build the wheel like Edgar Wright is watching. And there we have it, a nice wide, stiff and light wheel with no zombies, cults or aliens to be seen. Although I do fancy a Cornetto. Next, a bit of bondage, ask your parents, and a valve, ask your parents, and we're tubeless ready, ask your parents. I then rediscovered this custom rim packed insert they made for me for a previous bike, which is a 27.5 plus sized insert cut down to fit 26 inch. It needs to be a wider plus version so it still protects the rim, as a normal insert just wouldn't do much. I'm not using a trial specific rubber on the rear, but instead I'm going for something I know grips well, a Maxxis Minion. I didn't have a rear model, so a front will have to do. The tread pattern is great for mountain bike, but I'm going to modify it later to work a little better for trials. But the rubber compound is good, and it's not too heavy, so should be a good choice of tyre. This combo was a bit of a tight fit, so after some fighting and a rare result of a tyre lever, I did eventually get it all fitted. After seating the beads, I feed it some full fat wheel milk, reinflate, and we're good to go.
Well, almost good to go. Time to modify the tread like I mentioned. I'm going to do this by removing some of the shoulder knobs. These are great for cornering, but I won't really be doing much of that. By removing every second one, I'll create a bigger gap, which is more likely to let the tyre catch on the edge of an object. Imagine it like teeth on a cog. The fewer the teeth, the more aggressive the hold when it grips something. The other advantage is a weight saving. These bits of rubber add up to almost 50 grams. You can get specific tools to trim tyre treads, but I find soapy water solution and a fresh blade in a box cutter style knife works well too. Just be careful and replace the blade often. It's surprising how quickly they blunt, and a blunt knife is when you usually cut yourself. This took roughly 20 minutes to do, and this is the end result. A nice pile of rubber to add to my collection. Oh yeah, and a pretty cool looking tyre. Once all that is done, it's time to completely finish the wheel with a 15 tooth sprocket and a 203mm haze rotor. The only issue is, much like the dirt jump build I did recently, I'm trying to fit a 12mm hub onto a 9mm frame. To fix this, I'm using the same reverse components axle converter I used on a dirt jump bike, as, for reasons I'll explain in a future video, I ended up changing to a different system which works better for that bike. But because this bike has a much simpler vertical dropout, this converter should be perfect for this. It's starting to take shape now. Let's fit an arse bearing. I shouldn't really call it an arse, as this Trartec model is actually pretty good. Strong and light, which is always a good cooker combo. I found these Trartec cranks chilling out back. They're fairly basic, but so am I, so I think we'll get on great. They already have an 18 tooth sprocket fitted to match the rear 15, plus a right foot forward bash guard which is perfect for my right footedness. Now I probably should just call this the Chartec bike build as I add yet another one of their products. This time a chain tension o -matic. And if you've seen my builds, you'll know I like the KMC K610 chain matic so no surprises here. The good thing with this tensioner is that it locks into place and doesn't flap about, causing a racket like other models. That'll do, pig. And that'll do. And now onto the reason why I'm building this bike in the first place, the brakes. The rear disc is a Hayes A2. I've had great experiences with the A4 model, but sometimes a two piston brake can actually give more bite, which is ideal for trials. So I'm gonna try this out. I often get bad arm pump riding trials comps, so I'm curious to know how I get on with the super light lever feel these have. I'm hoping it'll be a big help. I do like how the caliper and frame colours match. Now like I alluded with the V-brake mounts on the fork, I'm not using a hydraulic rim brake like most trials bikes have, and instead I'm going for the simplicity, power and mainly nicer feel of a nice old V-brake. In this case, a very nice Avid Ultimate. The sealed bearings reduce any play in the arms and they're very stiff for extra power. And I love how much easier V-brakes are to set up over a hydraulic rim brake. Plus, I can adjust the spring tension to be very light, making them less fatiguing to pull, reducing my arm pump. You can't do that on a hydraulic rim brake. Like I mentioned earlier, talking about needing special pads for the aggressive rim texture, these are some I made myself. It's a harder rubber with great abrasion resistance and they work really well. And again, this is another advantage of a V-brake. You physically bolt the pads in. 
so there's no rattling or uneven pad wear like you get with clipping pads on hydraulic alternatives. I'll be pairing the caliper with an Avid SD7 lever. I actually prefer these over the ultimate levers, plus they're pretty cheap which is bonus. You can also adjust the power and lever firmness with the red dial on top. And that's another thing you can't do with a hydraulic rim brake. The only real disadvantage of a V-brake is the cable, where it's more open to the elements and needs smoother lines to feel good. It's important to get something that doesn't compress to retain a solid lever feel, and I'm going to use this alligator one for that very reason. Because it's made from aluminium segments, it can't compress, but also because it doesn't contain any steel, it's also lightweight. I'm hoping this should make for a solid lever feel. Now do you recognise these? They're from my Adamant Drillium build and look like crap. They work better than they look though, so on they go. And lastly, but not least, some bar gloves. And in general, thin ones work well for trials. And these ODI Gwyn models are the thinnest I have, so on they go too. And for a bit of nostalgia, I reused my original Titevax chain safe protector I had on my older Zonis. I get things lined up and tight, then give it away. No, not give it away, I mean, give it away. Place your guesses in the description. Exactly 10 kilos, how close were you? That's pretty much the same weight as my hex, which is quite interesting, well, to me at least. So, as you can see, the front wheel is rock solid with a rim brake, but surprisingly, the rear wheel isn't actually much worse. There's still some disadvantage to a rear disc, i.e. it's heavier and easier to damage, but maybe spoke flex isn't as much as an issue as I thought. Only one way to find out though. First impression is how weird it is to have a silent brake on this type of bike. Second impression is I really like the lack of noise. Third impression is that a stiffer front end with a rim brake actually makes front hops harder. There is some noise and some slight pad knocking in the rear brake, but that often goes after a week of riding or can be reduced with some tape on the back of the pads but I'm impressed with the power and feel of it. Overall, I'm pleased with the build, with it just being parts I had lying around. I think it's a nice looking bike, and first impressions are good. Now the cute thief was out sunbathing, so I asked him what he thought. Well, he's hard to please, but I'm stoked. I can't wait to put this bike to the test. And speaking of, I'm entering a competition on this in two days, so I'll soon find out what I think of this braking combo. I'll experiment with forward roll bars too. 
maybe even go more extreme than this. It'll be interesting to see what I think of this frame too. It's been 14 years since I last rode one, and I loved it back then. Will I still like it? To be fair, this is completely different to how I had mine set up all those years ago. Will it be better or worse? I wonder. What do you think? Anything you'd have done differently? Leave a comment and let me know. A riding video will be up soon, but until then, please subscribe if you like this video, leave a thumbs up, and have an amazing week. See you next time. Bye bye.